name is Sandy. I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. I've been doing it for many years now. And they're going into fifth grade and seventh grade next year. So today I'm going to show you guys what we are using for curriculum next year. Hi guys, here's an overview of what we're using for 5th and 7th grade. I tried to get the video out much, much sooner, but we moved a month ago and the house is being completely renovated. Um, I was unable to get a lot of the stuff out of the boxes. And I'm going to have to film this video on our second story on the subfloor because that's being renovated. And right now we're pretty much using the second story for storing the boxes because there's nowhere to put everything. So I'm starting off with something that's completely new to me this year. I purchased three things from Homeschool in the Woods. Uh, the first thing that we're already starting this summer is an elections unit. They have an elections lap book. And here's the, some of the little lap book accessories that my kids have started. And you get little booklets and there's an audio to go with the booklets. And then this is all the lap booking papers. And there's a lot, and I will warn you, it took me like an entire day just to get this one lap book project all printed and put together. And we've started it already this summer. I think it's a nice little thing for my kids to do this summer so they're not overloaded during the school year with it. And I really want to make sure that they know what's going on during the election this year. And also, I'm having my older son read a little bit from this book every day. Talks about all the U.S. presidents. The other thing I got from Homeschool in the Woods that we're going to be using with our history is the history timeline. We've never had a really big timeline like this. And it's going to be modern history from the Civil War to present day. This timeline is huge. And I've already gotten part of it prepared. They're going to have to cut out these characters every time we get to that part in history and they're going to stick it on the timeline. This thing's just really long, and I think they're going to have so much fun with it. So the last thing I got from Homeschool in the Woods, which I think is really cool and my kids are going to have a lot of fun with, is a holiday lap books. So they have a holiday package that you can get, and there's like all the major holidays there. And there's craft projects, and it gives you history on the holidays. And this is Labor Day, since Labor Day is coming up the soonest. I printed that one up already. My kids love doing like craft activities the day before a holiday starts, so I think they're going to have fun with that. So talking about the rest of the history we're using this year, we're going to be using the Good and the Beautiful again for our main spine. Um, just a little warning, I ordered the year four because that's about the Civil War and we're going to be going into the Civil War when we first start. I ordered it July 1st, it's now July 27th and it hasn't come yet. So while I was excited that the year four was not sold out, um, just a warning, if you want to go with the Good and Beautiful, it's going to take a while to get it. But I did, however, get the Year 4 History game. And it looks a lot of fun. It looks better than the Year 3 History game that we had. And, of course, this is the Year 3 that we were using last year. The Student Explorer. But we're also adding with History is the Knotgrass map books. I love these. I mainly love them because they're very detailed and there's directions on one side and there's a map on the other side so it makes it very easy for me to plan and coordinate. And they're learning so much about geography with these books. I'm not going to be reading the additional readers that go with the Good and the Beautiful History. I'm going to be reading these other books that I have here. I'm just going to do a quick flip through of them. This one's World War One. Got Pearl Harbor. D-Day. I've had this from when I was a kid and I still have it. I've held on to it all these years. It's the cookbook. We love cooking with history. Susan B. Anthony.
And I read these to my kids before they go to bed at night. They still enjoy a picture book in bed at night. These are our favorite books. The Interactive History Adventures. We love them. They have realistic photographs and pictures from the time period. And we are going to do a Titanic unit this year. Another Titanic book. We have a lot of Titanic books. And we did go to the Titanic Museum this summer when we did our road trip across the country. Here's everything I have for the Civil War. It's another interactive history adventure. And it takes us about two or three nights to go through these before bed. It goes pretty quick. And I'm going to add this for extra projects. My kids need stuff to work on while I'm reading to them, otherwise they get kind of bored just sitting there. So when there's nothing in the Student Explorer for the Good and the Beautiful, I'll probably pick projects from here. Civil War cooking. And I had picked this up last year. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use it, but there's a lot of good project ideas in here. And one more book. On days when there's not a student explorer for my kids to work on during the history read-alouds, so they don't get bored, I bought some extra things. My older son said he's excited to start this. It's the Good and the Beautiful Vintage Drawing Level 1. So he's going to be able to pick from these while I'm reading out loud for history. And my younger son really enjoys coloring books, like historic coloring books. So we have the Civil War uniforms for him. And I've also got Titanic. And the story of World War II. I love Dover coloring books. And then one more thing, I got the sticker activity book for them to do since we're doing modern history. This is the teacher planner that I buy every year. It's really cheap and it's super simple and I can write in my own dates. And I usually just plan like two weeks ahead because you never know if the kids are going to get sick or if you need to take a day off randomly for something. For science this year, my kids are actually doing a co-op. So they're going to be going to a homeschool class. Um, it's going to start off online because of the whole COVID going on and hopefully we can start going to their house towards the end of the year and then they can do lab experiments with other kids but it's only eight weeks in the fall and eight weeks in the spring so i was going to originally invest in the bju life science for seventh grade but since we were doing this co-op i didn't want to spend a lot of money so i ended up just getting this easy peasy biology to fill in the gaps and what i did was i purchased the workbook and I broke it down with an X-Acto knife and I put it in here. All the activities. So that is our plan for science this year. My fifth grader for math, he's going to be doing easy peasy step one. And we do kind of a hybrid of online work and workbook work. Some days we do online, some days we just work from the workbook and then other days I do a combination of both. So I purchased the whole entire workbook for offline and I did get the teacher's guide. Uh, it's very important to get the teacher's guide because it has all the answers in it. 
And last year I didn't get the teacher's guide and I had to try to calculate everything on my own to try to see if he got his answer right. And here is the step one workbook. I've tried so many different math curriculums and this is the one that works the best with both of my kids. I think they like the mix of the online and workbook work, so they're not doing the same every day. The books that he's going to be reading, I found some of these books on the Moving Beyond the Page website. I really like their book lists that they use for the different grades. So he's going to be reading Holes, there's no pictures in that one, Mrs. Frisbee, there's a few pictures in here but not too many. Abel's Island. And Ben and Me. And um, so we are going to be doing easy peasy language arts. Um, I've tried so many different language arts with my younger son, and this is the thing that clicks the most. He learns the most, he absorbs it, and he's really made the greatest leaps with this. So we're going to be finishing up level four, and then we're going to start level five. And here's the workbook. I also got the parent's guide, but flipping through it, I don't think I'm really going to use it that much. And also, we do a lot of it online, and he types up all of his writing assignments online because he prefers to type over writing. I'm going to be supplementing that with Mad Libs, just to give him a little bit of grammar every day to make it fun. And I'm also going to be adding, well we've been doing the Good and the Beautiful handwriting. He started level 3 last year and this is where they introduced cursive. And he's going to be finishing up level 3. This is a handwriting program that he doesn't mind doing. my seventh grader is going to be using. He is using the Good and the Beautiful for language arts, which he's been using it for years now and he loves it. And it's working so good for him. Like my kids, they learn completely different from each other. And I think I found a good curriculum for each of them to use that fits their learning style. And then he's going to be doing pre-algebra for math. And I did get the parents guide on this one too for the answers. And I recommend Easy Peasy if you're really good at math yourself, because I do teach the kids a lot myself. But see, there's not a whole lot of parent explanation in here each day. So if you're not very good at math, I don't know if this would be the best for your family, but we love it. And then the pre-algebra workbook. And then of course he's doing the good and the beautiful. We are reusing the pastels that I bought two years ago. So they do like pastels every other year and then they do the watercolors every other year. So for the readers for seventh grade, I purchased whatever the language arts for the good and the beautiful came with for his additional reading. Um, I didn't go with separate books. And um, this is our first year that we're purchasing all the additional readers that goes along with it. If he doesn't like them a lot, he really doesn't enjoy it, then I'll probably go to Moving Beyond the Page and pick out books from their list there. And here's everything it came with. I've never gotten the geography and grammar cards before. This is my first year also. You've got answer key. And here's the course book. <laughs> and he actually does enjoy this language arts and I really enjoy teaching it to him. And I did purchase new computers for each of my kids this year. Last year they were sharing a computer and the screen was cracked. And the way they're typing more and more book reports and papers on the computer, they kind of needed separate ones. So I bought this at Walmart. It's only a few hundred dollars, and so far it's been working pretty good for us. And of course I did get each kid their own case so that they don't break their brand new computers. And this, 
And this is the printer that we use for most of our work. All those pages I printed from Homeschool in the Woods came from this printer. I bought this a few years ago. It came from Amazon. It was pretty cheap. It's holding up so good and it really does the job. I hope this video was helpful. Bye!